Creating a responsive navigation bar using Tailwind CSS in Vue.js, really easy to do. First thing we're gonna do is create a component, a navbar component. So come to your components folder and create navbar.view. And then we're gonna import it into our parent, which in this case is app.view. So we're gonna say imports, oh, import. Import navbar from components navbar.view. And then we're gonna pop that down here and we're gonna get an error message when we save that and it's okay. We need to come to our navbar component and we need to add a script, set up and a template. Save that and then we're gonna have to stop the server and restart it and then that error message will disappear. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two navs. One's gonna be for mobile, one's gonna be for desktop or screens larger than mobile, should I say. So what we're gonna do first is just gonna add a div and we're gonna add our nav bar for mobile first. So we're gonna say div or should I say nav actually, let's go nav. And we're just gonna have it so that it's the menu items stacked one on top of the other. So what we're gonna have first is a button. It's a bit shambolic actually. And I'm just put, I'm gonna put a div container for the entire mobile nav. So we're gonna say mobile and within this we're gonna have our buttons. So this is how we do it. So we're gonna have two icons in this buttons div. So we're gonna to go to hero icons. We wanna have the burger menu icon and we wanna have an X. Ooh. So let's just go, do you know what? Let's go for two bars. It looks quite trendy, doesn't it? So copy that, paste that in there. Clicking copy is nothing. That's really weird, isn't it? Copying it's not working. It's just pasting what I already pasted. Let's try that again then. Copy SVG, copied. Weird. Okay, paste that in there. Tidy that up a bit. And then we want an X to close it. So we use that one. Copy SVG. That one worked when I copied it. Perfect. Tidy that up. Okay. And now we want an open status here for our navbar, for the buttons and the navbar, the mobile navbar in general. So we're gonna say nav open, we're gonna say equals ref false. So it's gonna be false by default. And we also need to import ref from view. So I'm just gonna output this so we can see it changing. What have I done here? What have I done? Why have I put that in that nav? This is just such a shambles, isn't it? Such a shambles. Okay, let's just tidy this up a little bit. So we've got, this is our mobile nav here. Don't know what I've done to be honest with you, a bit mad. So let's just come down here and say nav open. And we're gonna get rid of that, get rid of that. We are going to do is put a button here, and these SVG icons are going to be within the button. And when the button is clicked, so at click, we're going to say nav open equals the opposite of nav open. So we're just going to toggle that value. So let's come back here. Doesn't like that for some reason. Let's just stop the server. Oh no, it's because I didn't do that. Let's try that. Okay. See, now when I'm clicking that, it's toggling that value there, which is exactly what we want. So when the nav is open, we want to show the X, and when it's not open, we want to show these two bars here. So this one up here is the two bars. So we want to say plus, in fact, we want to bind 
some classes to this. So we want to say nav open is true. Then we want to show hidden. Or well, we want to output the class hidden there. If it's not, then we won't. And then we want to copy that. Let's make sure there's no classes. Uh, that's fine. And come down to the X icon and we want to say nav open is true. Then we don't want to show hidden, but else we do. So now let's save that. So nav open true, show the X. Nav open the false, show the bars. That's working. That is exactly what we want. And now we want to do the same for our nav, which doesn't yet have any content. So maybe we should add some links to our nav first. We will add a link. So we're going to say, just add it to nowhere. No, we're going to nowhere. Sorry. just I'm just waffling at this point. Just ignore me. It's for the best. So this is going to be our logo. So you can put an image here or you can just have some text. So we're just going to pop a few links. We're going to say link one, link two, link three. Save that. And now they are all in a line because they are links. So we're going to say we're just going to make them blocks. So we're going to say block, 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 block. And now we're going to pop the same logic that we've used up here onto here. So we want that. We want to be hidden when nav open is false. I've replaced that twice. Okay, so that is working. Looks horrible, but it's working. So let's get rid of that. We also only want this mobile nav to be displayed when the screen is the smallest. So right now it's going to be shown the whole time. We'll come to that in a second, but just to be aware. So that's our mobile nav existing. We haven't styled it yet, but let's just get our desktop nav created and then we'll style both of them and we'll make them look the same. Well, we'll make them look the same color. They're obviously not going to look the same because they're different shapes, as in one is stacked and one is going to be in line. So let's come here and we're going to say desktop. We're going to go div. And in here, we're just going to have them in line. So we're going to say div class. And we're going to put flex. So these are going to be flex items. And then we're going to have all the same links that we have here. So how does that look? Rubbish. But we can say gap x. And we can put a gap in between each one of them. So that's not bad. We can also give the outer container a little bit of padding. So we can go class equals P X four and P Y two. Now let's give that a background so we can actually see what's going on. Background in to go 500. We'll do the same for the mobile menu. So we're going to say class. We're going to give it some padding. So we're just going to go P X four P Y two. We're going to say background in to go 500. Now. We only want to see the mobile menu on the smallest screens, as I said. So we're going to say small 
hidden. Save that. So now, if I make the screen bigger, it's going to go. And for our desktop menu, we're going to say hidden small block. So now, on small screens, the smallest screen, we're going to have the mobile menu there. On anything else, we're going to have the desktop menu. And that's working. So now we're at the fun part where we can just start styling our menu. I mean, it doesn't look terrible as it is, but it doesn't look good. So what we're going to do, we're going to make the font white. So we're going to say text white, text white, save that. And then we're going to come down to our nav menu here. And we're going to say class equals text white. Our logo, we're going to make that a bit bolder. I mean, you'd probably do something better than that, but you know, I just want it to stand out a bit. And we're going to come down to our desktop menu. And we're going to say, what we're going to do exactly the same. So we're going to say, font bold, text white. And probably give that a bit more padding to be honest with you. BY4. And that's it. That is it. So that's how you make a responsive navigation menu, navigation bar in Vue.js using Tailwind CSS. If you can't be bothered to do that for yourself, or you want a nav bar that actually looks like it hasn't been built by a three-year-old, I recommend using a Tailwind CSS component library. I personally have been using Tailkit recently. It's really good. Loads of good options for nav bars and hundreds of other components. Don't quote me on it being hundreds. I haven't actually counted them. It feels like there's hundreds. There's a lot. Anyway, I'll pop a link in the description if you want to check that out for yourself. Thanks for watching. See you next time. The end.